Hey everybody, it's your boy Duel, back with another video. Today we'll be taking a look at Spectacular Spider-Man episode 14. This episode was titled uh, Blueprints, and it was written by Kevin Hopps and directed by Jennifer Coyle. Now last we saw Spider-Man and Peter Parker, Spider-Man had a deal with Venom and Eddie Brock, and coming to the realization that uh, he is officially done with the symbiote, and he disposes of the symbiote while also trying to figure out what's going on with his friends and family and Aunt May. So that's where we left off. And at the end of that episode, Gwen ends up kissing Peter. And so now we pick up where Peter is uh, basically talking to himself, wondering why, um, you know, why he didn't do anything after Gwen kissed him. So we're going to just jump right into the episode. Spider-Man is swinging around the city and he's thinking about how Gwen kissed him and how he just stood there. Also, it can be noted that in this episode it is snowing, so it's obviously it's winter time. He immediately gets attacked by Venom while he's swinging around, and he seems very confused. He's like not sure how you know Venom has returned so quickly. He just dealt with him, and Eddie's like, "Come join us, bro." And Eddie tries to take over Spidey, but he falls off the building in the process. And as he's falling, it turns out he just falls off his bed, and it's just a nightmare. And the intro picks up. Peter realizes that uh, it was just a nightmare, so he swings over to Eddie's dorm or apartment where he sees that Eddie took all of his stuff and moved out, but his roommate is still there sleeping. Uh, so it can be confirmed here, uh, I mentioned this in the last episode, that uh, when Spider-Man is done dealing with Venom, he just leaves Eddie Brock on top of the building. I guess he never did go back and get him or something because... Or Eddie just found his way down, which I guess wouldn't be impossible to think about. Um, but yeah, so he, he, he found his way back to his apartment. He wakes up and he leaves. He moves out. So I just wanted to point that out. So we now go back home where Pete is wishing he had a suit that was more designed for winter. He's like wearing like a sweater and he's trying to put his Spider-Man suit over it and it doesn't work. And I think this is kind of interesting because I don't know that this is ever been actually uh you know established in a spider-man well i i say i'm gonna say just a live action movie i think that's interesting um in the amazing spider-man 2 you know he's wearing andrew garfield like wears a coat but they don't actually talk about the struggles of making some uh, a suit that you know keeps him warm so i thought it was pretty cool to see that um, but yeah so pretty much he talks about how he needs to purchase some skin tight thermals for the future and so he's walking downstairs and he's he's making a list and he's got five things on this list. The first one being talk to Gwen, find Eddie, write Harry, buy thermals and talk to or sorry, take care of Aunt May. And he's making this list as he's walking downstairs and Aunt May is seen cooking breakfast where Peter immediately interrupts her and he tries to assist because he doesn't want her cooking and like, you know, overexerting herself. But he obviously fails miserably. He can't even flip a pancake. Man, I can't either. So, you know what, Pete? You and I, we're the same. No, but seriously. <laughs> we move to the school where Peter attempts to talk to Gwen. But the bell rings as soon as they both approach each other. And they both hastily leave each other. They just say, okay, well, that's the bell. See you later. And it's kind of awkward. Uh, we're gifted with a scene at the docks where it's a nice cameo from Stan Lee. Uh, and Mysterio... The first time we get to see Mysterio, he appears out of nowhere on the shipping on one of the shipping containers and he's like, I'm here to save humanity from the evils of technology and corrupting the human spirit. Uh, Stanley asks him, he's like, are we being punked just before uh, they both get uh, knocked out by Mysterio's quote unquote magic and then he disappears. Back at school, Peter and Gwen are exchanging looks while the other is not looking. You know, that same old trend of someone that has a crush on somebody. MJ is seeing this and she seems pretty pleased by it while Liz is behind them and she is she's very jealous. She's not happy with this at all. Pete gains some confidence and is about to go approach Gwen about their kiss until Liz grabs him and he's asking for his tutoring abilities. Um, you know, because she really what she wants is... She just wants to be closer to Peter. She likes him. So Pete is hesitant, but he agrees to help Liz. Um, 
Now uh, Mysterio's at it again and he's appearing this time in front of a truck delivery, stopping some truck drivers by spawning a holographic dragon and scaring everybody off the bridge. That is until Spider-Man arrives. Spidey calls Mysterio a magician and is obsessed with talking about himself in the third person, in which Mysterio disagrees and they begin to fight. They fight for a little while, but Spider-Man... Actually, I think they don't even fight. It's, it's more like Spider-Man just gets knocks to his knees really quick, and Mysterio pulls out a sword, and it's like, damn, he's going for the kill just immediately. He pulls out a sword, and he's about to slice Peter a new one until Peter uses his web shooters, and he basically blasts the blade away. Mysterio tells Spidey that uh, he's got a strong will, and he could end up being a formidable foe, but not today. He then lifts the truck into the sky, Spider-Man tries to, like, he walks towards the bridge because he's still too weak and he can't really move. And Mysterio disappears. So he throws the truck into the water and after Mysterio disappears, uh, Spidey's able to snap out of it and he jumps in after the truck. It goes into the water, which, you know, he dives in after it, saving the truck driver. It can be noted here that Spidey says that it's really cold when he gets into that water. And as soon as he saves the truck driver, he starts sneezing. And he's sneezing again in the next scene, which is an indication that he is now officially sick. Now we're back at the school where Peter and Liz are looking at a picture that he took for the Daily Bugle, where he's once again sneezing. <laughs> Liz tries to warm Pete up, but, you know, Pete is, like, I think uh, Pete, like, five episodes ago would love this. But as of right now, like, he just wants some, he just wanted somebody to love him. And now he, now he has too many people trying he's got two people trying to love him but he actually loves Gwen now so now he's like trying to pull away from Liz the bugle writes spider-man as the bad guy as per usual and a groaning Peter asks how spider-man is supposed to find a magician Liz is like ah don't worry about spider-man uh my dad books magicians at my hotel all the time he used to take us or he used to take me and my brother to see how the tricks were done behind the scenes and it's all about misdirection you need to pay attention to one thing while you're actually, you're supposed to be paying attention. So, like, basically you're focusing on one thing, and then while you should be focusing on another thing. And there's a subtle hint in this scene where, you know, he, Peter's paying attention to Liz, and then Gwen walks up behind. And, you know, she's kind of sad because Peter is just paying attention to Liz. Um, so, you know, it's ironic, right? Because he's paying attention to Liz, but he should be paying attention to Gwen. MJ asks Gwen what happened with Pete, and Gwen confesses what happened, telling him that they kissed, and MJ's like, well, what happened? And Gwen's like, well, she ran away, and he hasn't said anything since. We're now at what appears to be at the Norman residence, where they're having dinner with the Connors and a few other scientists, and they announce that they're bringing on somebody named Miles at ESU. Norman asks Dr. Warren what changes they can expect in the lab. Warren seems to get choked up by this while he's eating, so Martha interjects, saying that Miles' past successes have garnered attraction and much-needed grants as well as more private funding. And her plan was to bring back their lab assistant, Eddie Brock, but Eddie Brock isn't answering. We all know why, but she doesn't. They talk about student interns and asking about Gwen Stacy, and also talk about the potential of bringing on Peter Parker. Martha stops, and they say that, yeah, they have trust issues with Peter Parker. Norman mentions Peter. Ah, he's a friend of my son. And Dr. Warren states, all he cares about is having the best minds at his disposal. So it doesn't matter if you don't trust him or if he's a little sus. We need him there because he's really smart. Kurt also says that everyone deserves a second chance. Martha is still displeased with this decision, but she's like, fine, I, I agree, we'll reinstate him. Norman is very pleased with this information until he gets a call from Oscorp where it looks like Mysterio has infiltrated. Mysterio quickly knocks out the guards and summons a holographic dragons again, but Mysterio doesn't have fun for too long because Spider-Man interjects. They don't talk for long until Mysterio starts spawning some bats, claiming he saved the best for last. Spidey gets overwhelmed very quickly by these bats, but eventually he catches one, realizing that they're actually made out of technology, which is ironic because, you know, that's what Mysterio is trying to do. He's trying to rid people of technology, and here he is using technology. So there you go. Now you know it's actually not magic. Who could have thought that? He goes after Mysterio, but the bats pull him away just before Mysterio disappears. He hops onto a contraption that uh, Mysterio had covered in green mist, and Mysterio's already teleported himself back to where he was going i guess or where he's taking all this technology so spider-man hops on and he basically hitches a ride and he gets there and it turns out it's some sort of prop house 
He tries to apprehend Mysterio, but he sneezes and he and he basically gives Mysterio an edge here. Mysterio, you know, he realizes, oh, Spider-Man's here, so he throws a green smoke bomb at Spidey, distracting him. They begin to fight again, but this time, Mysterio throws more tricks at Spidey, to the point where Spider-Man realizes he can't rely on his sight and hearing, and he must only rely on his spider sense. So he puts on a blindfold, and just lets his spider sense take over, decide what the real danger is. This only works for so long until he takes off his blindfold, only to be greeted by a bunch of Mysterio clones. Uh, I don't know why Peter decides to take off his blindfold in this scene. I don't know why he wouldn't just kept it on, but maybe he just figured out that all the clones are just technology, you know, they're drones or something. I don't know. Um, eventually, Spider-Man fights off the clones, going after the real Mysterio, taking away his glove that grants him his quote-unquote magic power. After thwarting Mysterio, he takes off his mask and he says, so now you know, it's me. And Spider-Man's like, Right. Who are you again? Quentin says, You put me away. Did I? Cool. And then Quentin gets irritated saying, Don't pretend I was the chameleon's right hand man. Peter's like, Yeah, yeah, sure, buddy. I remember you. Sure. And then basically, uh, you know, he puts his hands behind his back, essentially arresting him. Um, and that pretty much wraps it up in Mysterio for the moment. Peter's back home recounting that he didn't get anything done on his list that he needed to get done, just in time to stop May from cooking again. May hands Peter a letter, and it turns out it's an exclusive freelance contract with an advance from the Bugle. Pete's very excited about this, says he needs to call Gwen, realizing that she's the first person that he'd want to tell about this, and they'll have breakfast, and they'll talk about the kiss, they'll talk about everything. That is until Norman calls and offers him an internship at the ESU. And he also says that he wants to be Peter's mentor. And Peter is, you know, he's excited about this, but also he's kind of hesitant because, you know, he's Spider-Man and he realizes that Norman's kind of a creepy dude. Um, but he accepts anyway. And Norman's like, well, we need to meet for breakfast. And Pete's like, breakfast? Well, I kind of, you know, I, you know, I had something I had to do. And Norman's like, well, it doesn't pay to waste time, Peter. So basically that convinces him not to do breakfast with Gwen and to meet up with Norman at ESU. It's now revealed that Quentin used a fake version of himself to get arrested, as well as teaming up with the Tinkerer. Tinkerer is on the phone with the Master Planner, saying that everything Mysterio stole is right where they want it. So, once again, misdirection. Um, and they, they, they got one up on Spidey, so good for them, I guess. Planner says that everything will go according to his Master Plan. And that's the end of the episode. Uh, my overall thoughts on this episode is, right off the bat, I want to say I don't like the animation in this episode, and this might be because um, uh, because I'm on a, a streaming platform where maybe it doesn't look as good on streaming, I'm not really too sure, but when it snows, the, the frames just get extremely blurry, and they basically take up the entire, I don't know, it's kind of distracting, I don't like it. I don't like it. I think it affected the animation. And like I said, this could be because I'm streaming, so it doesn't look, I don't know, it doesn't look as crisp when you're streaming. I don't know, the snow effect. It just looks weird. I don't like it. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't I don't like that, obviously. And um, I don't like that Peter never got a chance to talk to Gwen. I mean, obviously, the show's not over, and he's going to talk to Gwen at some point. I just wish that he finally got to that point, because right now he's gonna he's kind of painting himself as a jerk. He's basically paying attention to Liz when he should just put his foot down and be like, hey, I need to go talk to Gwen. I'll talk to you later, Liz. You know what I mean? Like, if he was, like, really super interested, he would find a way. But, you know, Peter is just, you know, being a nice guy. And he doesn't want to hurt Liz's feelings. So he's just humoring her at this point. Um, but I will say, it's a nice touch to know that uh, Peter did not figure out Mysterio on his own this time. He had to get help from his friend. And... It's also nice to know that they actually got a one-up on him this time. It's not just a villain of the week and he wins. You know what I mean? So, I kind of like that. It's like, I know this is uh, episode one of season two of the Spectacular Spider-Man. So, like, this this time they could be doing, like, a more thorough planning of the season. So, it's not just establishing Spider-Man as a character. Establishing Gwen, Mary Jane, and all these characters... Um, and doing a villain of the week, now they can actually plan out an entire season where we have everything established, and um, 
Now, I'm not saying the first season was bad, but it was just more so uh, Spider-Man meets villain, villain of the week. Spider-Man figures out, villain, or, you know, he gets overwhelmed first half of the episode and then he wins at the end. Um, you know, it's like a, watching a minimized version of Dragon Ball Z, right? Except it's Spider-Man. Um, like I said, not a complaint on the, or knock on the, f- the first season, but it just seems like there might be like a, you know, overarching plot to season two. So that's exciting to see. Overall, my thoughts on the episode, I think it was pretty solid. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about this episode. If there's like a favorite moment that you had about this episode. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for me. Um, we'll be continuing as usual, uh, on the next episode. And, uh, if you made it this far, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And while you're here, if you want to support the channel, please like, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. It goes a long way. So anyways, just remember with great power comes great responsibility. I'm Dual Dyer and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.